In beginning the Australia and Pacific segment of WOW Global 24, and in keeping with First Nations protocol from Australia, we acknowledge the Turrbal and Jagera peoples whose lands have hosted the production of this four-hour segment. We also acknowledge the many lands of First Nations across Australia and the Pacific, from which the women, First Nations and non-Indigenous, join each other today and join with you all from across the globe. We begin with enduring messages of all that we women and girls can be, from June Oscar, who delivered the powerful opening speech of WOW 2018 in Australia. June Oscar is a Boonooba woman from Australia's remote northwest region of the Kimberley. June calls for deep engagement with First Nations laws and women with this provocative invitation, under whose law? June tells us more about herself and her people, the Boonooba people, in her speech, which she gave under auspice of her role as the first woman to hold the position of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Commissioner with the Australian Human Rights Commission, a position she still holds in 2020. Join with us, stay with us, return to us as WOW Global 24 brings women of the world to each other during this global health pandemic. Jalungur Langu, Palangar Yanangawaranga and Gadejo Moingrango, Turbaliano, Jagrayano Palangara, what did I call a Jaranding? Kama Lingadejo Moingrango Nira Mangara Dangane Yadawara, Wulalawara, Jalungurangaraguda. I acknowledge the traditional owners, Turbal and Jagra people and all your people. And I plan to just set the tone about how we can and will deliver justice under laws and frameworks that uphold our unique rights, needs and interests as Indigenous peoples, as Indigenous women and girls. I'd like to start with a few questions and as I've, you know, pondered what I would say here, these questions uh, arose for me. Under whose law do I come to define myself? Under whose definition of woman do I become me? Under whose definition of equality do I achieve success? And under whose policy and legislative frameworks and judicial systems do I become all that I am? As Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, we sit at an intersection of many ways of being and a complex set of identities. All that I am is many things. I'm a proud Bunaba person from my ancestral homelands. I'm an Australian citizen and a strong Aboriginal woman. It is with this set of identities and the lessons of my ancestors tightly folded together within me that I have become the first woman to be appointed to the role of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Commissioner at the Australian Human Rights Commission under the laws of this nation I hold this position and have statutory responsibilities under the laws of my ancestors and the continuation of our civilization today. I hold this position with a great sense of responsibility 
for the human rights of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and particularly women and girls. With this at the forefront of my mind, I have made the rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women and girls a priority of my five-year term. Our identities and who we are as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women is complex, constantly shaped by the dynamic world we occupy. We de derive our strength and rich culture from a line of incredible Indigenous women emanating from a time immemorial. Simultaneously, we live with multiple forms of discrimination, which cut across lines of race, class, and socioeconomic status. As Indigenous women, we should feel confident to be all of who we are in a contemporary Australia while remaining secure in our distinct identities. We should never have to resist any aspect of our identity or feel the need to assimilate to get by because of discriminating acts against us. We certainly should not have to assimilate to be successful. Under our traditional laws and the laws of this nation and our international human rights obligations, we should be free to express all of who we are without fear of persecution, discrimination, or any form of marginalization. Today, in front of you all, I have expressed a significant part of my identity through speaking the language of my ancestors that you heard in my opening. And I carry forward in my voice determination and agency the lessons of my forebears, my grandmother and my mother. I attribute to them so much of my success and resilience in the face of all forms of discrimination. Like so many of the Indigenous women in our societal past, they were remarkable, tenacious leaders, warriors, as much as they were teachers and nurturers, they left in our hands our societal values and structures so we could thrive and achieve for generations to come. But I also know, standing here alone, I cannot bring forth the equality that is the right of all of our women and girls. Equality belongs to us all. It cannot be achieved by one or a few representing the many. There are Indigenous women and girls across this country who every day are achieving extraordinary acts while living in great adversity. Unfortunately, to all our, to all our detriment, these women and girls are too often blocked from achieving their full potential because of structural barriers that have become entrenched under our laws and policies. For far too many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women, this is the reality. They are the fastest growing prison population in Australia, currently comprising 34% of women behind bars, but only 2% of the adult female population in Australia. Their children are almost 10 times as likely to be living in out-of-home care as other Australian children. 
they are 32 times more likely to be hospitalised from family violence than 10 times more likely to be killed as a result of violent assault. These statistics are the result of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women not being heard. For years we have shouted from our homes and communities and public platforms and still things have not changed. These statistics are by no means a result of our silence. These are the statistic that show, statistics that show the injustice of our material conditions which curtail our rights and freedoms. They are the indication of an appalling inequality and resulting poverty that has arisen because our voices have been marginalised. And so many indicators, Indigenous women experience a greater inequality than non-Indigenous women. This cannot go on. The rights of uh, Indigenous women are all, are all of our human rights in this nation. If we allow for inequality to persist and become entrenched through enacting inappropriate laws and policies, we not only diminish Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's rights, we diminish our humanity as a nation. For things to change and for equality to be achieved, our voices must be heard, our recommendations implemented and actions taken. And our voices must be heard in their entirety, on our terms, expressing all of who we are. So every part of our identity is seen as equal to all other women and people in Australia. For our non-Indigenous sisters in the audience, as I said, earlier, walk beside us on this journey in your commitment to achieving equality. We are more equal when we stand beside one another embracing our differences. We progress equality when we take the time to listen to the truth of Indigenous women's lived experiences. We progress equality when we believe that within that truth lies the solutions for change. Ultimately, achievement of equality for Indigenous women can only be defined by us. It exists entirely on our terms as Indigenous women. Together we must say, as Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples, under all our laws, all women will be heard. Under all our laws, equality will embrace the full force and potential of diversity. Under all our laws, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women and girls will be all of who we are and all of who we can be. Thank you.